I'm really not sure about all the problems that you might come across. Just leave them in the comments below and I will try to answer all of them. I wasn't aware that this is such a hot topic. Let's do it. Initiating. Welcome back. Welcome back to my daily grind. Create yourself is what you'll find me doing every day and every night. No time to lose one day, one step in the right direction. I'm Chris and I'm only here to show you if I can do it, you can do it too. Welcome back to the vlog. It is Saturday, another day, another chance to push out. And the topic for this vlog is the Focusrite Scarlett 4i4 setup guide. So let's get it. By the way, all the tutorials and life hacks are right here. Watch them all. But before we get started, love goes out to all my subscribers. Thank you for making my life special and worth living to the max. So let me try to give back with a sweet, sweet video. So in my unboxing, and I don't know, in this video right here, the title of this video is something like unboxing and setup. And this video is getting a lot of dislikes because you know, there is pretty much no setup. So I thought, hey, why not do a setup guide? That's easy for me. I did study audio engineering, so let's do it. And also this will just be a rather simple rundown, I guess, but as the title says, Leave your questions below. I will get to answering them in the next vlog. Well, in one of the next vlogs, I will actually link you the upcoming vlog right here. And in this vlog, I will try to answer as many questions as I get under this one in a one month or two or something like that. I wasn't aware that this is such a hot topic, but it apparently is. So yeah, let's let's get right to it. Little bit off topic, but if you're interested, the new setup is back here, nice little backlight. And what I'm looking at is basically this right here, my monitor with my monitor light and that's the focus right right here so let's go for the setup guide okay so I cleaned up my table briefly now it's looking way nicer and as you can see the 4i4 is here on this edge right here it's connected right here back here with USB-C of course there is a MIDI cable and I will get to this later you will of course need to download and install the software but I think this is super basic and I don't I don't think a guide for this is needed if I'm wrong about this just again leave a comment below this right here is my main microphone right here it's this one the AKG 214 C214 it was unnecessary <laughs> and then right here as you can see I have connected my headphones my headphones which are looking quite trashy but these are actually amazing headphones fun fact they came with my with this violin back here now before getting into more details about you know buttons and stuff I will just show you my wiring and all of that like my connections so as I said this is connected to my PC actually to my hub that is down here it's not perfect but it's working sometimes I need to reconnect it then right here and right here these are my monitors and yes this is not optimal <laughs> whatsoever i plan on building myself stands and they will stay on the floor i will just move them that this upper plane basically sh is pointing to my ears i will leave them on the floor because this is actually a pretty cool thought when it gets to standing waves if you put them on your face height then it's basically in the middle well of the floor and of the ceiling and for standing waves this is really bad think about it i'm not going to get into this more than just mentioning it now monitors and microphone that's a condenser microphone so i need to press this button but as i said i will get to this later my boxes they are passive speakers so to say i think this is not 100 percent correct but they will need an amplifier which is DIY, by the way. Amazing amplifier, 200 watts. And this amplifier is connected back here to the mono outs. This one in the middle, basically. Left and right, a left and right cable, they go into the amp. What the heck is my Ronin doing? Sorry for the shaking, I don't know what's going on. And then from the amp, there is a hot and cold wire going to the boxes, to each box to each monitor. So that's the basic setup right there. Let's take a super brief look at the software. I really like the software. Oh my God, it's so much better than the previous version. Really helpful is this mute, these mute buttons right here. This is the master volume for the output and I'm just using this. I'm not, as I said, I'm, I'm not going to use the knob because these will just break after some time. I'm just using the master volume for the monitor outputs right here. There is a mute function right here so I'm always having the software open and it's basically to the left all the way to the left so I always know where the software is because I'm using it a lot it would be amazing if they would implement shortcuts like key shortcuts you know so that I can activate it with a macro or something like that anyway so you can switch this custom mix not needed whatsoever then the same for the monitors master volume right here I'm using this not the knob you can mute it stereos I'm not using this whatsoever and then this is also interesting the loopback thing 
using it. I have used this a few times when I wasn't able to export audio from the editing software for whatever reason. I just deactivated the video and just played back the audio and with the loopback, I recorded it in my DAW. If you have questions about the loopback, then you know, feel free to ask. Let me just show you the workflow really, really briefly. So, oh yeah, you also have these hardware inputs right there. If you want to reset it, just double click master fader, you can pan it. Okay, so the loopback, when it's not muted, then it will actually, it will just work. You can treat this like a microphone actually, like a mic in. Down here I have the loopback recording. So for the setup itself, I can only show you this stuff for Cubase, but it's pretty similar in all DAWs anyway. So in Cubase, you go to up here, you go to VST connections or just press F4. I only added the buses that I actually need and it's just add bus and then in this case, it's a stereo bus. I could also just create a mono, two monos, but that's kind of like, why would I do this? And do it on two tracks, stereo bus. And then on this side right here, you can choose between all the inputs that you have. So input one and two, which are the inputs on the front. You have two line inputs on the back as well, which is input three and four. And then you also have loop one and loop two. And if this is just not showing up and you just can't, you can't select them, then you should go to device setup and then you will get to this thing right here. And there you have your VST audio system. There you can also change the, the buffer size which will affect your latency right there as you can see the latency now got cut in half 11 milliseconds is not too bad actually if you go really really low with the latency well with the with the buffer size you will get a low latency but this can lead to a cpu overload and then it will just go for this so yeah just let you know anyway so when you hear there is a chance that it's saying inactive right here and then you basically have to do your magic and activate it somehow i haven't messed with this in ages it just always worked oh yeah back to the software output routing input settings actually all the buttons got removed from the interface now you have you know you need to switch between line and instrument right here air is an eq i cannot recommend to use this this will add air you know it will add high frequencies so just don't use this this is to emulate previous interfaces and you have the pad right here which will make it quieter by minus 10 or minus 20 something like that can't recommend to do this either you will only need this for really loud signals so it's line signal of course anyways oh my goodness i just realized that my iso is actually fixed that is bad Oh, it's, it's worse now. <laughs> it's a bit better now, anyways. So if you have a problem with this, just let me know. But I think this won't give you a problem. And then you can just use the loop. Oh yeah, here you can actually rename it. So I think I chose the loop one and loop two. I could go for loop L and loop right. So you can rename it right here. I'm just so clueless on what on what guide I should give you because that's where I need your feedback, your questions. So and now I created a new stereo track right here, down here, new stereo track. And I chose input, of course. Input is a loop bag, of course, that we just defined. Yeah, and then I can just record my internal audio, which is really helpful. That is another amazing improvement. All right, and lastly, let me just show you the stuff on the interface. As I said, instrument, air and pad, this is all software based now you will only have the gain right here and if you want to use a condenser microphone you have to activate the phantom power and then as you can see let's ramp it up all the way now you can basically see my my voice getting picked up by the microphone you can actually change the color of your peaking and of your you know of this it's so funny that's pretty dope so software is amazing but all the all the buttons are gone and that is not so amazing you know there is not much to say this is the monitor knob and the headphone knob which i don't recommend to use i'm as i said i'm only using the software because they might turn faulty otherwise one day turn faulty <laughs> That is not good, I cannot recommend to do this, but let's get to the back side. Okay, this lock symbol right here, I think you can just chain it somewhere. Then this is the USB in, of course, MIDI out. You will need this to send MIDI to something, to a synth or something. And MIDI in, this will accept, for example, MIDI from my keyboard. This is also the reason why I recommend the 4i4 instead of the 2i2, because MIDI, MIDI is awesome. Then we have the line outputs. We have one and two, which are in the middle, and this is currently feeding my monitors. Then we have three and four for another monitor set or 
headphones or whatever. And then back here we also have the line inputs. You can use a synth on here or something like that. I would not use a guitar or something back here on the line because it's not a, well, it's not a line signal. You could use a DI box, for example. If I remember this correctly, they will give a, a line signal. This could work, but I would still, I would connect it to this, to this in the front. Okay, this is not good for the monitors, but it's also not amazingly bad. So yeah, as I said, this is like my guide, but <laughs> I have no idea about all the problems that you might come across. So this concludes my little guide right here. This is ba pretty basic, I think. And as I said, I'm really not sure about all the problems that you might come across. So again, just leave them in the comments below and I will try to answer all of them. It's not that crazy hard, I guess. But yeah, I could be wrong because, you know, as I said, I started this and I have no tangible... I basically forgot how it was when I knew nothing, I guess. Anyways, I hope this was helpful. Back to you, Chris. Again, if you have more questions about this stuff, just leave them below. I will get to answering them in the next vlog. And until then, yeah, smash the like button the way my last video is getting smashed <laughs> with tons of dislikes for clickbaiting, I guess. But hey, I'm getting better at it. At least that's something, I guess. Bang the bell like crap to never miss tutorial of vlogs and check the recent news on chrisviral.com and yeah that's it for today i will see you tomorrow